pull it off the heat and I'll uh
Hey, Jenny, what's cooking? Not much. What's cooking with you, Jonathan? It's December, so everything is cooking at once, Jenny. That does I don't know happen, about you. doesn't it? And it's just, you know, it's just everything is trying to get done for the year, and of course it's Christmas time, so we're trying to do something nice for people, and you know what I, you know, I was just thinking, I was thinking about how much I want a bunch of crap in my house. Especially a bunch of plastic crap. A bunch of plastic China crap. And was stuck on a it's something no one has ever said. No one has ever said any of this. So, you know, I, I always think about what, what's a nice thing to get somebody for, for Christmas, and I really like something that can be used up. Maybe something that can be eaten, even. Or, or drunk. Or drunk. One of the two. Consumables. Yeah, me too. Because we really, most of us don't need a lot more stuff. We just don't need know? a lot more stuff. And so I think that having... Yeah. Having, yeah. Having, having things that you can eat, that you can, uh, it's just a, such a way to share a part of you and, uh, and a nice thing that you can do. And then when they're done, it's done. You don't have to, you don't have more things taking up space. So that's what we're talking about today on What's Cooking Now, uh, the, uh, uh, coming to you from the Heinemann Settlement School. And uh, today it's edible gifts. So uh, let's, uh, let's, what all do you have planned for us tonight, Jenny? Well, you know, I love edible gifts. And mm -hmm. I, I just want to say, um, I have a friend, and I'll, and I'll call her out here, Charlotte Morton, mm -hmm. who one time I made gifts, and I thought this was a lovely gift. I got the little, like, quilted jelly jars that mm -hmm. become skinny, which fit perfectly in the six-pack, in a six-pack, right? Mm -hmm. And I took some six, some empty six-packs, mm -hmm. and I spray-painted them silver, and then I made six different kinds of soup. And I um, put them in, and that was my gift that mm -hmm. year, because I thought, you know, we get a lot of sweet stuff. We get a lot of candy. We get a lot of that kind of stuff. This would be a great gift. And Charlotte looked at me and said, I don't like homemade gifts. So, Charlotte, I will never give you another homemade gift yeah. again. But everybody else loves that everybody stuff. Everybody else, that's, that's, you know. You that, know, and that, I loved that soup gift. I thought that was a, that year I was really proud of myself. I thought it was a great gift all because. Four six packets. Yeah, six, you know, I'll take it. small, like small it. enough that you could, and I left headspace so that people could stick them in their freezer and then pull them out. Um, take them to, it was enough for one big serving or maybe two smaller servings. And I thought people can take this, they can pull it out on a busy night, they can. Um, take it to, to work for lunch, and I really love that gift. So I love food gifts. I love to get them. If anybody wants to give them to me, I love to give them. Because you know what we say. You know what our, our, our tagline here at What's Cooking Now is um, where... Uh, where food is love, and love is delicious. And I, I think we both really feel that way. Yeah. Like when we make something, we're making it because we love you, and we that's, you know, it's a way that we can really share our love. So what I've got tonight um, is I've got three different things. I'm going to make some savory thumbprint cookies that um, have cream cheese and pepper jelly. And this is a recipe that I found on the fabulous Splendid Table. So you can Google that on the Splendid Table, savory thumbprint cookies with cream cheese and pepper jelly. Um, and they're absolutely delicious. And I've got some wonderful pepper jelly from Second Chance Homestead that our good friend Missy Young made. Mm -hmm. I've got some strawberry habanero jelly. So I'm going to make some of those. They're really beautiful. I made a test batch this morning and ate the entire um, batch. They're so delicious. And then I'm going to make some savory um, cornbread cake pops. I'm not a, I'm, I really, at Christmas especially, I feel like there's so much sweet stuff around. Yeah. And really, in my life in general, give me something salty over something sweet almost any time. Um, and then I'm going to um, do some of Ronnie Lundy's home pickle bologna. And in a shocking turn of events, I'm also going to make a cocktail tonight. Wow. So I'm pretty excited about that. Turning the events. Next time I'm going to have to make a salad. You're going to really have to maybe, you know, tutor me in the... Yeah, well, we'll make it happen. We'll right. make it happen. Okay. So, uh, so I am going to start with, uh, over here at the stove, um, I have with uh, a gift that I'm going to make. And I think this is going to be a pretty fabulous and waiting for the camera to come around here. I love this, Jonathan, what Jonathan's going to make. I've had so, it. I've been lucky enough. It's a beautiful gift that anybody would be... What I've started with here is the way most good things start with a bunch of bacon. Um, so I've got about a pound of bacon that I have, uh, that I have started off. And I've, I've cut it up into nice little pieces. And then I've, I've gotten those fairly crispy. And I watched you cut that up, Jonathan. You just took the whole pound of bacon and you just sliced through it. And I was watching the way you did that. You sort of stacked it and you cut each, not each piece individually, but as it was stacked. But each you stack. cut it long ways and then across. And long ways well and then across. Good, good so, nice size pieces. so this is making what are technically called lardon, if you want to be all French about it. Oh, we do, I think. So, uh, so I'm going to get all of those out. And then I'm going to probably not use all of this grease. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, gonna dump the rest of that grease into uh, a bowl here. That's good. And get I would my. I have to make two pounds of bacon because I would eat one pound before 
I ever got around yeah, to that's, finishing uh, up this recipe. Yeah, yeah this, this won't last long. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start an onion. I've got this over fairly low, um, no, sort of medium, mediumish heat. And I always have to remember that this, uh, uh, this stove is so powerful uh, compared to what I'm used to, which is my dying stove at home. Uh, and uh, you, if you've watched our first episode. Is this medium restaurant heat? I, I think prob this is probably medium, uh, medium normal. Because you heat. really don't want to brown. Them you don't really want to get these right? too brown. I'm, what I'm doing is sweating them. This is a sweat. This is not really. I'm not really trying to uh, brown these hard. I'm just trying to sweat them, which is uh, where you're trying to get a lot of the liquid out of the onions. And you always want to add salt when you're doing that because salt will help pull it out. And I've got some seasoned salt here, some smoky, uh, smoky seasoned salt from Penzi's that I really like. I live. This goes in just about everything I make. Um, let me taste that because I'm a, I'm a fan of the classic Lowry's. Mm -hmm. And this is, they have several different variations. There's a spicy and a smoky and the, oh, the really smoky good. is just so perfect. Get some of that. Mm. And uh, yeah, that one, I buy two, I buy a couple of those every time I'm in Louisville. And uh, so that's, so I'm going to get those going for a little while. And uh, while Jenny gets her cookies on. So I love um, the classic cream cheese pepper jelly, Ritz cracker, appetizer that we serve um, so often at Southern holiday parties. And so when I saw this recipe, I knew that it was awesome and would be for me. And again, you can just Google it on the Splendid table. They have such great recipes. So I made up the dough ahead of time. Um, the only, I think I actually stuck to the recipe pretty much. I think the only variation really is that I use some Aleppo pepper, which is the official pepper of the What's Cooking Now um, show. It oh. should be. Oh, I thought you actually wanted me to check the oven's temperature. But. Oh, oh, because yeah. I, oh, right, right, right. So, um, and then I put it, I made this actually a couple of days ago, too. So I love to make savory crackers, and, you know, there's a kind of classic cheese cracker that's mm -hmm. almost like equal parts butter, cheese, and flour. Yeah. You can season it up different ways. My mom used to make a variation with Rice Krispies in it that was nice and crunchy, mm -hmm. and they're just nice to have um, around because you can make it into a log, and you can freeze it if you want, but you can also just kind of keep it in your refrigerator and pull it out and slice mm -hmm. it and make fresh crackers anytime you want during the holiday. Which is like doing magic. It is like doing magic. People, people act, you know, will act like you have just conjured, you know, yeah. gold in, out of lead or something. And I love, um, I like having impromptu little, mm -hmm. you know, get-togethers on the holidays, and it's nice to have some things. So we talked about this being a food gift show, mm -hmm. um, and I think making gifts that you can give to people is lovely, but I also think it's lovely to gift yourself. So I like to have some sort of quick, fancy, a little different appetizers that I can pull out, whether I'm just making those for myself or myself and my loved ones, or whether a, a cocktail party breaks out as is wont to happen. So the recipe for this says to, to like, I don't know, scoop it and do something, but I went ahead and made it into a, um, into a log, log, and then I want these to be pretty little. The recipe has them you know, being sort of cookie size, but I really kind of want these to be one bite. So mm -hmm. I'm going to... Is sort of a normal thumbprint cookie size anyway? Well, are, that is a normal thumbprint cookie is more than one bite. I mean, uh, I, sometimes I, I cram mean, the whole I thing in my mouth, but like yay big that's two yeah. bites to me, even yeah. with my big giant mouth. So I really, I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this dough in quarters, and then I'm just going to take them and I'm going to cut it across ways. And I think this will be about right. Yeah, that's a little bit. And then I'm going to take each of these pieces and I'm going to roll them into a ball. And then I'm going to make um, a little indentation. And I actually got, um, let's see, this might be too small. Let's just try this out and see what we think. I got a little wee spoon thinking I could. That's pretty small. I think I might. Yeah, that is pretty I think small. I might do two of these. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're I don't right. think you're going to be able to get a pinky print in No, I don't, I don't think so either. Okay, so I'll do two together. Live cooking Ooh. show. Exactly. Where we experiment. So this is a group, good group thing. It is and a good group And, you know, that's, that's one of my favorite kinds of, uh, of Christmas uh, gatherings is when everybody gets together. And I know a lot of our, our uh, uh, girlfriends get together and... Uh, sort of have girls day uh, where they all just make cookies all day. Well, and yeah. it's, it's nice. This is a nice um, thing to do with kids, too, because mm. it's pretty easy. Like, kids can do this, right? Um, and it's a lot of fun um, to do and fairly easy, like I said. So once we get these kind of rolled out, you can use your thumb 
or I'm going to use just this just to give it a little bit of a more regular shape. And you're going to, we're going to bake these off for about 10 minutes, maybe a little less in this nice um, restaurant quality oven. And then pull them out and put a little cream cheese and a dab of pepper jelly in them and bake them until they're done. And I love Jennifer Weber. So I found this recipe and because we love Missy Young at Second Chance Home Place so much, Homestead so much, and she makes these fabulous pepper jellies. She loves to grow peppers. I have some footage somewhere of Corey eating. What was, what was, what was that? A, a Carolina, Carolina Reaper, Reaper mm. pepper. That was Jordan eating that. Jordan. It was Jordan, right. I was looking at Jordan. I meant Jordan. Um, and that was hilarious. But Missy grows a lot of really beautiful mm. peppers that she sells at the farmer's market. And she also makes um, a lot of pepper jelly, which people love. And she does a lot of different varieties. Um, and they're really fun to have around. And they're good to, to, to eat like this. And they're good to use as glazes. And I love with food gifts and with food in general, I really like being able to use local products. Mm. You know, I like being able to use local stuff. Yeah, stuff your friends made. It's always great. Yeah. And pepper jelly is really versatile. I mean, as you say, you can use it in so many savory applications. But, you know, I, I, I just love if uh, it's a great thing to have around and have a block of cream cheese in the fridge. And if people come over, you can uh, I mean, it really doesn't need a lot. Over. Doesn't need a lot of adornment. Yeah, or it? if they don't come over or if you're just, you know, it's My Thursday sister night Annie here. made, this has happened more than once, I think, actually, mm -hmm. made pepper jelly and it didn't gel right. Mm -hmm. And so she said, this is called the pepper jelly glaze instead. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's pepper pretty, syrup. <laughs> pepper syrup. So it's pretty versatile, mm -hmm. easy to, to um, do stuff with. So I've got this going on. I'm going to pop these in the oven for about 10 minutes. And I've got the oven at 350. What you got going on with your jam there, well, Jonathan? I've got my uh, I've got my onions. Are, uh, yeah, probably turned up just a touch. My uh, I've got my onions going, and again, I've got a lot of liquid coming out of there. And one of the things that you get is you want to get all of that liquid uh, out of there and into the into that juice. So right. all that uh, liquid that's come out is sort of deglazing deglazing the pan. Yeah, get down in there, and you can see the uh, you see where all those brown bits are coming up. Now that we've got all this liquid from the onions, and that's you know that all came from the from the bacon, and that's why we don't have to brown these onions too much. We can because uh, we're getting a lot of that beautiful brown flavor from the um, from the bacon. I'm going to go ahead and add uh, some garlic. Here I've got about four cloves of garlic that I've cut up. I've not cut. I've not been really precious about mincing that up. I've sort of left it in big pieces. Um, you always want to add garlic way after you add your onions because it doesn't take as long to cook. Um, it uh, uh, it really, if you don't have anything else in the pan, garlic will cook in in minute, in a minute. Uh, and by the time you smell garlic, usually it's it's done. Um, but here I've got some onions in the pan, so that liquid is actually going to protect my garlic and keep it from getting burned and bitter and nasty. Um, so I'm going to just dump that down in there and get it going. I'm going to show how yellow this is. And that won't take much longer before we can get the rest of this going on. That is absolutely beautiful. It's, I, I, That's starting to smell great. If you're um, watching at home or listening at home, turn, your, turn the smell up. On yeah, the yeah, you definitely want the smell of vision happening right here. Because this, uh, this is just looking really nice. All right, I'm going to let that go for, for a minute or two. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start on my savory cornbread pot. Right. So here's what happened. I made cornbread last night. Mm -hmm. And I love cornbread. And I love leftover cornbread. And what I really love is to crumble it up and put buttermilk mm -hmm. and eat it with a spoon. And so I made, you know, a normal mm -hmm. size skillet for my daughter and I. And then this um, morning when I was thinking about what I wanted to make for the show, I thought, I'll make savory cornbread cake pops. I bet no one's ever thought of that before. <laughs> and then I Googled it, and of course people have thought of it. And there were a bunch of recipes out there, but mine's varied just a little bit. If of you course. can imagine it, there's a recipe out there. It's kind of like corn. It is a little, a little bit. What did you say that was rule 34? Rule 34, I believe it's called. So I've just got some cream cheese that I've just softened um, a little bit. And I don't, I'm, I'm not going to make too many of these. And I'm going to make these really small mm. because they're kind of rich. And then I have some chow chow that my friend Liz Buchanan made. It's absolutely delicious. So I was thinking about ways to make this sort of um, Appalachian, I guess. And um, I considered ways to put soup beans in. I'm really, I really want to play with this. Yeah. Um, I think I've got some ideas. But I'm going to put um, a good... Um, so I've got, I don't know, I have this much cream cheese, <laughs> so half, a block just or so. half a block and I've softened it 
And I'm, to that, I'm going to add a good heaping um, teaspoon of chow chow. And I'm just going to mix that together. Um, and really, this and could have endless variations. So when I was thinking about this, I was first I thought that maybe I wanted to put sauerkraut in it, or maybe I wanted to do like a soup bean puree and put in it, add a little bit more there. So I, I think I'm really looking forward to kind of playing with this idea. Yeah. And then I'm going to just take my cornbread, and I'm going to crumble it up pretty finely. And it's, it's good and crumbly because cornbread does not have flour in it, and I will die on that hill. I mean, it can. I'm it really can. that big of a purist, but um, I mean, I really, I like all the forms of cornbread, but this is my favorite kind, and this is the kind my dad taught me to make with stone ground cornmeal, um, a little baking soda, a little baking powder, some um, usually bacon grease, although I used butter in this because I was out of bacon grease or lard, and um, buttermilk and eggs. And it does stale quickly, but that's okay mm. because you eat it so fast. Yeah, that's not going to last long. And if it's leftover, you pour buttermilk on it. I think I'm ready for my next step over here, so I'm going to have okay, Tamara come on around and, and say, uh, we're uh, while we were away, I had Tamara um, go ahead and I had Tamara add the bacon back to that, uh, back to this, this pan. So that's all there and gorgeous. Now, uh, I'm going to add a few more things to this. I'm going to add some, some cider vinegar, first of all. And I'm not measuring this very much. You know, if you, uh, it's certainly okay if you do. I'm not going to get upset with you. But I'm just telling you, you can't mess this up. You, you cannot mess this right up. You what, have you seen what all's in here? Bacon, onions, garlic, brown sugar. It smells so good. Cider vinegar. And it's only going to get better from here. You cannot mess this up. Um, I love I love combinations of vinegar and brown sugar. This is the uh, uh, barbecue nerd in me, particularly the one who was briefly exiled in North Carolina, uh, who uh, who picks up picked up on that uh, uh, that vinegar and brown sugar uh, combination that they build their barbecue around, because that ain't nothing like ketchup. So I've added some of that, and then I'm going to add the uh, other PS de resistance. I'm going to pull this off the heat because what am I adding? Bourbon. Bourbon. That's right, bourbon. Because the combination of bacon and bourbon, there's something magical about it. Now, I so, could not agree with that sentiment more. This doesn't take a whole lot. Now, I, you'll note I pulled my skillet off the, off the heat. You always want to add, when you're adding liquor to a pan, you don't want to pour it straight out of the bottle. You want to pour it into something else first. And uh, especially if the bottle's full, that one happened to be I used the last of it. But, and then uh, you always want to add it off the heat and then return it to the heat. So I'm adding, you know, a good probably three quarters of a cup of, uh, of a decent bourbon to that. And then I'm going to put it back on the heat. Now there's enough other liquid in there that that's probably not going to flame up. Though if it does, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time that's happened. Would not be the first time I've set something on fire kitchens of the in this kitchen. Now, the I'm, <laughs> now I'm going to add just a couple other things to this. I'm going to add some uh, some herbs, and I'm going to add those in whole stems because I'm going to pull them back out once I'm done. I'm just going to add a kind of a big sprig of thyme and uh, and some rosemary. I think those two will go together beautifully in this. Uh, this is going to be delicious. In this, what we're making here is bourbon bacon jam. So. That looks amazing. So that's it. That's it. I'm going to let that sit for a while and bubble up and, uh, and thicken up a little bit. And then we'll talk about how to finish it and what to do with it later on. Okay, while we wait for that to thicken up, let's go to a commercial break. We'll be you're right watching, back. This you're watching What's Cooking Now, now uh, from, coming to you from the Hindman Settlement School. Give the gift of Appalachia this holiday season from Hyman Settlement School. 
delivering decadent fruitcakes and Appalachian Source gift boxes to your door. Each purchase helps to fund services to increase access to traditional arts, promote food security, and improve children's literacy outcomes in Eastern Kentucky. View our full collection of gift boxes and fruitcakes at hyman.org forward slash shop. The Red Spotted Newt is a locally owned independent bookstore located in downtown Hazard, Kentucky, specializing in Appalachian literature from authors such as Silas House, Gurney Norman, and Annette Clapsaddle, among many others. The Newt also offers a full collection of art and gifts, including little bubby child prints and these sweet cards inspired by The Office. Check out their store located at 221 Memorial Drive in Hazard or shop online through bookshop.org. And be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram at the handle Red Spotted Newt. Welcome back. You're watching What's Cooking Now, coming to you from the Hindman Settlement School with an assist from the Kentucky Humanities Council. And uh, tonight we're making food gifts. That's right, stuff you can give away uh, because we all want you know, stuff around our house. And Jenny, I'm going to make a point here. Okay. I think that because a lot of people, when they think food gifts, they think, you know, I, I, you, you think of things like a nice jar of jelly or a nice uh, canned, you know, canned relish or something like that. And you're like, I don't want to get out the canner. I don't want to get out the... Um, because, you know, when you, when you think a gift, you, you might want to give something that lasts forever. And I'm saying don't. Because people never I'm saying, get, you know, give perishable things and give yes. things that are going to perish now. Yes. Because if you, uh, because, you know, a lot of times if somebody gives me a nice jam or something like that, I'll put it in the pantry. You know, because I've got to save that for a special occasion. Right. And, uh, but, you know, I think about the movie Sideways, which was otherwise an okay movie, but I remember this one sentiment that came from that movie is that, you know, somebody was talking about a really special bottle of wine he was saving for a, a special occasion, and he said, you know, the special occasion is the day you open that bottle of wine. That's right. That's so right. the special occasion like is the day that, you, uh, is the day that you, you use these things. So encourage somebody, here's something that I want you to use right now. Because it's not like there's no chances for entertaining or, you know, uh, quick dinners or anything like that at... Uh, this time of year. Yeah. So what are you adding to your Okay, uh, so what box? I have, this is just cream cheese and kind of a lot. Just, I put as mm -hmm. much cornbread as I could and still have it stick together. And then Tamara crushed up. These are just some tortilla chips. Mm -hmm. So I experimented with this and I experimented with toasting the cornbread mm -hmm. crumbs with some seasonings and that was pretty good. Yeah. But I really wanted more of a crunch. And also I want it to be pretty salty. And I'm gonna add a pretty good amount of Aleppo pepper to that. And I'm going to add some shallot salt. This nice. is some salt that smell this. I love this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Nice. Just got a little hit of onion. Yeah. I got this at a little spice, uh, spice shop in um, St. Petersburg, Florida. And I'm going to add a pretty good dusting of that and just shake that up a little bit with my fingers. And then I've got a plate right over here. And this could not be easier. And I'm just going to take and form, and this is, this, these are pretty rich, so I do want these kind of small. And I'm just gonna roll them around, and then sort of press the crumbled up chips on them, and press, sort of press it into it a little bit. Just to give it a little crunch. And then a little stick. And then a little stick. And I'm going to keep making these until I have a plate full. And then I've made some homemade kind of a kind of a buffalo sauce. It's mm -hmm. got butter and um, hot sauce and a little Worcestershire and a little vinegar in it that I'm going to serve these to dip in. Mm. And that is going to be delicious. That does sound I think. insanely good. Yeah. And this is something that you know, if you showed up to a to a party, you could eat them right then. Or you know, if you showed up to a party, I would probably hide them and uh, <laughs> eat them myself later. The recipes I looked at. Um, called for like putting them in the refrigerator but mm -hmm. I I don't I, I think that that would really dull the flavors mm -hmm. I don't think cream cheese and cornbread is something I want refrigerated really very much and I'm kind of really pressing this in there that, you know it's not sticking together you want to chill the cream cheese and firm it up well I mean I think, I think so are whole but I think they're fine were those eggs supposed to go in there? So no, the eggs are going to go someplace else. And I'll go ahead, I'll come back to this in just a minute. I first want you to see, look how, I don't know if you That's can see gorgeous. how pretty this hmm? egg is, how pretty this um, little blue egg is. And I got these eggs from the Happy Hens and look how yolky they are. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, check on, ooh, I forgot about these. Actually. Yeah, your cookies. They're not torched. 
I'm going to pull these out. Do I have a landing spot? And I'm just going to use that spoon again to press down on the indentations a little bit. And I really let these go a little bit long because I forgot about them. But that's okay. They'll still be fine. They'll be delicious. And I'm going to... You can tell that this is live cooking because I just remember what the egg is for. Before I did this, I was supposed to crush up Ritz crackers and dip these in the egg mm. and then the roll them in the Ritz crackers. I was wondering. Sorry about that. That's okay. We'll just, um, It'll we'll be just fine. go ahead and go with it. Um, so I'm going to put the, a little spoonful of cream cheese and a little spoonful of pepper jelly in each of these. Nice. And then run them back in the oven. I'm mad I forgot the Ritz crackers because that's really an important part. Don't forget that at home, folks. <laughs> So I'll just dab. So just all around dab. me there are things being assembled. They're yeah. beautiful. I'm going to go check quickly on my, you don't have to come over for this. I'm so just, uh, um, what's your favorite food gift to receive, Jonathan? You know, one thing that I've received a couple of years now is uh, our dear friend Angie. Yeah. Um, who, uh, who comes from a family of, of Chinese cooks. Her dad ran a Chinese restaurant, so she loves um, cooking a lot of the things that they would cook at home. Um, and, uh, you know, in the last year, it happened a couple of times. It happened at Christmas, but also happened at uh, uh, just another random time or two, I think definitely at Chinese uh, New Year. But uh, she just likes to make things and, and just sort of drop them off on the porch sometimes, make, uh, nice. you know, collections of, uh, of appetizers, uh, of, you know, just delicious little things in general, things. little dumplings. And uh, that has, uh, that's something I really look forward to. So if Angie's out there, you know, uh, listening to us tonight, keep it up. And, uh, yeah, I think that that's, that's probably the one that, uh, that gets me every time. Um, and our friend Molly is, uh, known for her cookies. She makes just, just, uh, vats of cookies every year and, uh, brings, you know, usually arranges a really fancy mm -hmm. plate for everybody. She, you know, finds right. fancy plates and then, uh, Brings just, you know, trays of cookies that should theoretically last a lot longer than they do. Yeah, Jennifer, the brought, Jennifer Weaver brought us a bunch of cookies from her baking, and mm -hmm. should, they should have lasted longer than they did. Yeah, they Lily and just... I made short work of them, <laughs> really, and they were delicious. I love to get anything that's like a family recipe, mm -hmm. you know, that people, that has a story attached to it. And you know what I would, you know what I gave, I'm giving a bunch of people this year. I ordered, um, Hyman Settlement School's got these great curated gift oh, boxes. Oh yeah, they do have those there. fantastic gift boxes. So there, I ordered some of the Mountain Mornings and those have um, Windy, local Windy Hills coffee. And where's the bacon from, Corey? Or the ham, it's uh, ham, isn't broad it? Broadbent ham and um, apple, apple butter. Jelly. apple, and, and, and they're really, they're just amazing. Um, and the Homesick Appalachian is, I think, another really special curated box. So get on Hyman Settlement School's webpage and check those out. Yeah, shameless plug. So easy. <laughs> so easy because you can, uh, they'll, they'll ship them for you. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you don't have to do anything except click, click. And then they'll ship those um, wherever you need them to be shipped. Um, and they're just a really, really, and I, I am shamelessly plugging them because they're such a good gift. They're so beautiful and they're really packaged really beautifully. Uh, we've joked about this show, Step Away from the Fruitcake, but I told Corey that's because the title, Step Away from the Fruitcake, because yours will never be as good as Hyman Settlement School's Frogtown Fruitcake, was just a little bit too long. A little. Um, a little but their fruitcake is, um, hold, hold one up there, Jonathan. They're down there. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely. So look at this. Can you see I mean, that? that's a fruitcake you can, you know, hang your hat on right there. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. I mean, it's really I think that's nice. one we can all get behind. Yeah. Um, and so those are another great gift that you can give. I just, I think it's really important to do good with what you give, you know? I mean, I feel really good about, about buying stuff from Hyman because they do so much good work. And I feel like that money's going someplace. It's not just going to Walmart or to Amazon, you know? It's going to people I know and love, and I know that they're going to reinvest it in the community. And I feel the same way about buying stuff from farmers markets and local farmers. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited about North Fork Local Foods, Perry County Farmers Markets doing a pop-up on the 21st, a winter mm -hmm. solstice pop-up. And I know that there are going to be people there with baked goods and with jams and jellies. And I just, I really hope, I've seen a lot of chatter this year about buying local and how local means that things aren't stuck on container ships. And I hope people really do that because 
It matters where you spend your money. It matters a lot. And if you, and, and you know, a lot of times when it comes down to the, to the last few minutes, the, um, you know, that's anything that you can buy like that, any baked goods that you can buy, that's one you don't have to make. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you've got family coming over, if you've got uh, people coming in, I, I know I got down to the end at Thanksgiving and realized, you know, I was supposed to make pies and didn't have time. So I, I called up the people at the Midway School, which is uh, Weta Michael's uh, wonderful bakery in Midway, mm -hmm. and I actually called my friend Marcy Krim, who works there. And, I didn't uh, know Marcy was Marcy there. works there, yes, Marcy. and uh, who, uh, um, who, who uh, even got me in after the, the deadline. Uh, thanks, Marcy. Um, and uh, helps to have friends in high places. It does help to have friends. Of course, she went and told her her boss, "Yeah, I've got this friend." And the boss said, "Oh, everybody's got a friend right now." <laughs> so, uh, so sure. thanks, thanks to all of you. I feel like you're a food influencer. That's I, you know, I don't know about that. And, and I think she actually said, "Well, he's you a friend of Wita me. too." And and then and and, like, everybody's, like everybody's Wita's friend. So, which is true, which is, yeah. absolutely true. But uh, but you know, if you but if you go, you know, to these pop ups and places like this, they're going to have baked goods for sale. And that's something you don't have to do. Oh, yeah. It's something you can uh, you can share. That's really awesome. That's really, you know, it's it's definitely handmade, even if it wasn't your hands. So it's uh, you know, it's it's just a great thing to do. I think this time of year. Jonathan, I'm kind of thirsty. If I get this out of the way, you think you can make some? I think I could get some cocktails going on. Johnny, what else you want to maybe run a right run here? another commercial first while we're sure. setting up? All right. So you're watching uh, what's cooking now, uh, coming to you from the Hyndman Settlement School. We'll be right back with a beverage. I'm gonna wait for the camera to go off before I lick my fingers. Give the gift of Appalachia this holiday season from Hyman Settlement School, delivering decadent fruitcakes and Appalachian source gift boxes to your door. Each purchase helps to fund services to increase access to traditional arts, promote food security, and improve children's literacy outcomes in Eastern Kentucky. View our full collection of gift boxes and fruitcakes at hyman.org forward slash shop. The Red Spotted Newt is a locally owned independent bookstore located in downtown Hazard, Kentucky, specializing in Appalachian literature from authors such as Silas House, Gurney Norman, and Annette Clapsaddle, among many others. The Newt also offers a full collection of art and gifts, including little bubby child prints and these sweet cards inspired by The Office. Check out their store located at 221 Memorial Drive in Hazard or shop online through bookshop.org. And be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram at the handle Red Spotted Newt. And we're back, and it's beverage time around here. So, uh, uh, so in thinking about beverages for, for Christmas, everybody loves, uh, you know, everybody loves eggnog. You know, eggnog is great. I love eggnog, but you know what I love even more is um, one year, I, I remember I was at home, and I wanted some eggnog, but I knew I didn't have um, time to, or I didn't want to whip the eggs and do all that. And I remember I sent you a message, and I said, Jonathan, I want eggnog, but not eggnog. What's something I can make? And you sent me a recipe for a milk punch mm -hmm. that I love because it was like eggnog but not as thick and not as rich. And then I discovered that you make this, and this is amazing. So this is something that is, uh, a lot of people refer to this as Puerto Rican eggnog. Even though there are no eggs involved whatsoever and there's no cooking, and this is going to take about, you know, oh, 10 minutes or so to come together. So, uh, so this is a, a fantastic thing to know. Uh, this is called Coquito, C-O-Q-U-I-T-O. And uh, I'm going to start with rum. And um, I'm going to use a spice rum here. In fact, I've got some Old New Orleans uh, spice rum, which is delicious. It's, kind of, it's not as quite as out there as, you know, something like a Captain Morgan. It's a little bit more subtle, Can a little I bit. Uh, yeah, please. Mm. That smells so. And in tasty. fact, I've got some of this that I have created the garnish for this, uh, which is rum raisins. Um, these raisins have been soaking overnight in that very rum. So I'm going to just pour off my rum that I used in that. And, and that if a raisin or two gets in there, that is not the end of the world. So yeah, so that has picked up a lot really of that's picked up a lot of fruit oh, yum. from that. If a raisin or two gets in there, it's not the end of the world. It will get blent up with everything else. I'm going to add a little of the, the pure stuff just to, because this, uh, this is stout. It's meant to be. All right, now this is, there are four cans involved here. So... Uh, um, because, uh, because a lot of um, it's like a cuatro leche drink. It's like a cuatro leche uh, because a lot of your your uh, Latino recipes will involve 
uh, canned milks. This is uh, they're just very very common in in um, in Latin Latin countries. So I'm going to start with some sweetened condensed milk. I love uh, sweetened condensed. Milk. One can there. There's uh, in in the great Carson McCullers book, Member of the Wedding, Frankie just eats condensed sweetened milk out of the can with a spoon, and I don't I can, blame her. I can get behind it. Yeah. I can I can believe it. Uh, we're also going to do some evaporated, evaporated milk. Because, you know, most Latin countries are hot, so it's not like milk is going to keep a long time unless it's in a can. So, and it's been, been processed. Okay, then I have two different coconut products. I have coconut, mi I have coconut milk. So this is just regular old coconut milk. Uh, it is, uh, I keep, this is a pantry staple of mine. It usually gets really firm like this. Um, at least on top, and then so let that drain out, and then we'll get this all that stuff so good. out of there. And then our fourth can is this. This is co this is cream of coconut. This is Coco Lopez. That um, is the only brand of cream of coconut, as I'm aware, and the only brand I, I will ever use. Seen another brand. Um, what is in this? I don't know. I don't want to know. Um, it's it is. Delicious. It is delicious. It is. Uh, you know, you can make a fresh pina colada all you want. It is not a real pina colada without Coco Lopez. I agree. Um, this is a, a really processed weirdo product, but, uh, but I dearly love it. And, uh, man, this one's firm. So I'm going to get down in there, yeah, dig that out. That. Yeah, don't know what all is in there, but don't really care. Just going to, I know this. It's that like it's, if condensed sweetened milk and coconut milk had a baby. Yeah, it kind of, yeah. And it's, it's been around forever, and it's... Uh, but like I say, it's, it's essential in a pina colada if you're doing it right. My parents really only drank like Jack Daniels and Coke. They didn't drink co fancy cocktails, mm -hmm. but I, I know there was always a can of that like in the liquor mm -hmm. cabinet. Oh, it yeah. Stay there for a long time, you know. Yeah, and they haven't Nobody changed would. the design on the cans no, in which forever, too, which is also great. And then we add a little vanilla. Just got some real vanilla there. Okay. Pretty good splash. Uh, and some, uh, some cinnamon. So this decent. has got me feeling Christmassy all So right. that's, that's nice and Christmassy. And then I'm going to add some, some nutmeg. And you'll notice I've got a whole piece. Because I love nutmeg. Nutmeg is great. Nutmeg, if, if you nutmeg ground from, a, uh, uh, from, from a, a whole piece here. And by the way, um, this is nutmeg. This whole piece of nutmeg. You would think, hey, that's a nut. No, that's a meg. This is called a meg. Yes. Um, is, so, it, is it like a seed? I don't, I, I'm not sure what it is, but it's referred to as a meg. I feel like I've looked this up before, and it's like yeah, maybe a seed the, of a fleshy fruit. Yeah, and there's Someone a... Someone that up at home. And, and, yeah, mace is the outer Mace is, is the, the outer little, bar. like, like the sort of lacy, the lacy covering on it, yeah. So... Mm, that smells so good. So I'm going to put quite a bit of that nutmeg in there. Oh, gosh. Mm, I love fresh grated nutmeg, and one of the things I love about nutmeg is it's really versatile. You know, it goes mm -hmm. in savory dishes. Like I usually put a little bit in if I'm making a white sauce. Mm -hmm. It goes in um, sweet dishes. It's just delicious. And I don't know and if you guys saw that if you've not used fresh nutmeg. So Jonathan just um, it's, it's sort of flat, and then that's it. Jonathan can just that's or it. I can just chunk it back. You in just the throw that back in there, and then pull it out. And Most a lot of chefs I know will just keep one of those in the pocket of their apron. Just all the time. Just keep I one ready. Start doing that. So, uh, so that's it, by the way. That's all you have to do. And then I'm taking this blender over to the. Uh, there we go. Oh yeah. So we're blending this up nice and smooth. All right. Now this is a. Uh, this is a food gift show. Making this to give as a gift, so I'm going to transfer it to a nice, fancy bottle. And uh, this bottle. What a great present. And this came from, uh, and this bottle, of course, came from fancy German bottled water. Um, and it so had its label removed. You just kind of saved that. I just saved these bottles. I love this. And you're pouring so I'm it through gonna, a funnel. I'm gonna pour it, gonna funnel it in here. Who wouldn't want to get that? And and if you if you give this right? this will uh, 15 minutes roughly. Uh, <laughs> and you know if you give this to somebody now what you could do with that, um, what I might even do is take one of these megs and just tape it to the side, so, um, so that somebody can uh, can uh, can have it to grate at home and have their own fresh nutmeg. Um, you might take a little baggie and put some of these rum raisins in it. Um, 
So I'm going to get my glasses here. Mmm, these are so, ooh, these are so tasty. And I'm going to get a little ice mm. just because, you don't have to serve this on ice, but this is, uh, since we haven't had time to chill this. Well, and I feel like it's, um, it's so, I, I like it's it It's very ice. thick. It's kind of thick, you know? Yeah, and this is one of those things that's very, uh, um, it's, it's pretty stout, so you don't want a giant glass of it. Um, Speak I mean, for yourself. Well, I like many small glasses of it myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to pour a couple of those. And yeah, if you show up with that bottle over there. Where's your grated, here, let's grate a little bit. For a yeah, and, and then you can grate some nutmeg over top of that. Is that enough? Oops, more. That'll do. And you are, did you already put the raisins in? I wasn't paying attention. I did, I dropped some raisins in. And then I'm gonna take a picture. And uh, Jenny's gonna check her cookies. I'm just going to let them sit in there for a minute. That'll work. Because it's more important to drink this cocktail. We want to try this. All right. Merry Christmas to Merry you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Oh, yeah. Mm. That is just right. Because you got that, that nutmeg hit you. I mean, it's mm. like eggnog, but it's a little little fresher, a little brighter, oh I think. Oh, my gosh. This is so good. You saw how long that took to make. Mm. Some stuff you can pull out of the pantry. So... Oh, I, aspire, stuff they all had, I aspire to have a pantry that stuff I they all had stuff. they had all of it at the Whitesburg Food City by the way <laughs> so mm. so there it is folks Coquito oh that is so good Coquito mm. and if you show up with a bottle of this mm. um, with to to your friend and they uh, um, and they don't like it get new friends yeah <laughs> just get new friends at that point call because, me I'll come over and yeah come. really we're, we're, we're available so, uh, Jenny, do you have a cocktail for us? I Is do. Is that right? So, my boyfriend and I were driving around, and he said, you know, you and Jonathan should do a show where you make a cocktail, and he makes a salad. And I said, I don't know. I'm really not oh, super good at making cocktails. Um, it's kind of not my thing. It's Jonathan's thing. And his cocktails are always so perfect and delicious um, that I hate to do that. But the same boyfriend who challenged me to that brought me this bottle of Pomo, and it's delicious. It's um, kind of like an apple brandy, but not quite. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, really good. And it's good just to sip it like an aperitif um, on its own. But I looked up some cocktail recipes. And the cocktail that I'm going to attempt to make, and I'm a little nervous about using... I asked Jonathan to bring his cocktail shaker because I don't <laughs> have one somehow, um, is called a Jackie Rose. So there's a classic cocktail called a Jack Rose. And that has... Let me consult my notes. I'm like Jonathan. <laughs> who just knows all these things off the top of his head all the time. Um, the Jack Rose has apple brandy, some citrus, and then grenadine, right? Mm -hmm. And grenadine's made out of pomegranate. It is. Um, essentially. And so this is called the Jackie Rose, and it has um, pomo. It's got uh, pomegranate juice, and I've got just some of the palm that you can mm -hmm. get um, at the grocery store. And then it's got lemon and lime juice. And I've gone ahead and juiced my lemon and lime mm -hmm. together so that they're equal parts. So it's two ounces of pomo three quarters of an ounce of palm, a quarter ounce of lemon, and a quarter ounce of lime. Now, this is why Jonathan is a superior cocktail maker to me, because he will measure all this. I'm probably just going to eyeball it. You think it's going to be okay? It'll be fine. Okay. So I pour it in here, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I want two ounces of this. I feel like I want something to measure in. Hmm. What's in that glass? Let me, let me grab. Hold the, talk amongst yourself while I grab a little... <laughs> So I spilled Jenny's uh, Kikito and made her a new one, but you can also see that if you just drop in the top, you can drop some, uh, some of those rum raisins in there and get a nice little, uh, you get a really nice garnish uh, on top of those. They don't really They're float so very well. But, uh, okay, so I'm gonna attempt to use like uh, proportions, mm -hmm. right? So how much is that, would you say? That's, uh, well, how big is that cup, half cup? I don't know. So that's probably half cup. Which is how many ounces? Four ounces. Four ounces, mm -hmm. okay. Should I double this? No. No. You're good. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. So if that's four ounces, then I want... You want about an ounce of, of that altogether. Yep. Wait, no. I only wanted a no, half ounce. No, you want a half ounce. So you want a half ounce of each. Okay, and this is together, so... Yeah, this is together, right? so you're good. And then this is what I want, three quarters of an ounce. That look 
like about three quarters of an ounce. Actually, you want an ounce and a half of that. I do? Oh, because I'm doubling. Because you're doubling, yeah. This is, again, why Jonathan's <laughs> cocktails are better. So an ounce and a half, so almost as much. Like a little more, little more than you had of the lemon juice. That, that looks perfect. Okay. Go work. Okay, and then I'm going to put some ice in it. Yep, so talking about how to use a Boston shaker, more ice than you think. And Jonathan uh, taught me that you shake the drinks that have citrus. Yes. Because it wakes the citrus up. It, it, yeah, it livens up the citrus. That's good. Okay. All right. So then you take your glass, sit on there, a nice little pop like that. You got it. So now This is up, the important part. Up over the shoulder, like you mean it. I do mean it. I mean every ounce of it. There you go. Got to switch shoulders a time or two. <laughs> this looks cooler. All right. You're good. Now, now the best way, I like to put it up against my, my chest like that and just sort of pop it. Pop it in so sort of that gives you a nice... Uh... I think it's stuck forever. Ow, God. That was painful. How did you do that? Years. Years of experience. Of practice. Here, I'll let you pour. I know exactly. I've used that shaker only about, oh, I don't know, probably a hundred times on some variation of this show. So, you know, that's just a gorgeous cocktail. Isn't it pretty? And and we're not talking about a very high alcoholic co cocktail no. here. I mean, this is a very uh, low booze cocktail because yeah. you've got, uh, and this is from, and, and that, this is a pomo from Wise Bird, by the way, from, uh, uh, in Lexington, which right. is in, located in Lexington and is a beautiful uh, and they make some fantastic cider. I've not actually had their Pomo yet, but um, but this is not a very high. This is a 19% alcohol. So and that's your that's your base spirit. That's your uh, that's your main spirit in this. So you're not talking about a lot of uh, uh, not talking about a whole lot of booze, which can be good if you've got you know things to do. And beautiful twist there. This is the Jackie Rose. I like it. Are we ready? I'm ready. Slauncha. Happy Hanukkah. Oh, I like it's that. It's nice. That is nice. It's nice. I mean, it's just, uh, it's not too sweet. Mm -mm. The pomo on its own was a little sweet for me. Mm -hmm. Like just sipping it as an But But when you've added all the sour and, and then the pomegranate, I mean, mm -hmm. you just, you're adding a bunch of sour to it. I considered doing, there was another drink that was ginger ale and bourbon mm -hmm. and pomo, and I considered that. Nothing wrong with that. And some bitters. Mm. Very nice. Okay, that is really good. All right, what do you got going on with your jam? Well, I think it's about there. It's getting there. What do you think? Turned it up a little bit. It was yeah. taking forever. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Maybe so, minutes, yeah, we'll give that, give that another few minutes and then, uh, and then talk about how to finish that. Uh, what else you got for us, Jenny? So the last thing that I have that I'm going to make comes from Ronnie Lundy's gorgeous cookbook, Vittles. And if you have not seen this book or read this book, get it immediately. It's absolutely amazing. Buy it for everyone you know. Buy for it for business. everyone you know. The um, pictures in it are gorgeous. It's just really beautiful. And one of my favorite things, and in mine it falls open to this page, <laughs> is her recipe for pickle bologna, mm -hmm. which she says she would put on a, any charcuterie board at any New York party. Any, and anywhere. Hold it up anywhere in this world. Um, to anywhere. And so um, I will as well. And so I'm, I'm going to do, um, I don't even use the recipe that much anymore, but I'm going to take uh, my vinegar and I'm gonna heat it up. I've got a pot over here. And first I'm gonna turn on the back burner, which is not the correct one. And I'm gonna just pour this in here. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of sugar and some pickling spices, just some sort of general, any kind of pickling spices will do. And I'm gonna bring that to heat. And in the meantime, I've got this huge this. chub of bologna. Um, that I'm going to um, cut up into um, whatever size I want my pickle bologna to be, right? Some people like slices, some people like, um, like rounds, some people like um, little triangles. So you can really cut it any way you want. And of course, I'm not going to use this whole thing of, of bologna right now. But I am going to cut that up and I'm going to layer it in a jar. I have these peppers that I've, that I've cut. 
but I'm going to tell you to be honest. Like, it looks really pretty with the peppers, and Ronnie's original recipe has the peppers, and the colors are really beautiful mm. and vibrant, but when it comes to eating it, I find I don't always eat the peppers. What I eat is the garlic. Mm. I love whole cloves of garlic. So I've got some whole cloves of garlic and a red onion that I'm going to slice up, and I'm going to layer those nice. um, in, a, um, in a jar um, to... Um, and then I'm going to let it sit for, I, I think you're supposed to let it sit for about 14 days. Mm -hmm. And this is one of my favorite gifts to give people because I love pickle bologna. And, and my friends all love it. And it's just And it's so many pretty. people think of it as just the, you know, stuff out of the, the, the fishers, uh, the big. And it can you know, be. And I mean, it can like be. That too, that's that's right? great too. I mean, I, I'm, I'm definitely not opposed to that. But the. Uh, this is really good. But this, uh, this, this, this version, this uh, of, of Ronnie's is, is amazing. And I've never made it myself. I don't know why I've not. But. Uh, it, well, um, it's really fun to make. But uh, I've eaten a bunch that Jenny's made, and it's always been been pretty fantastic. So let's uh, let's go over here to the, uh, uh, and I think we're about done he over here with our jam. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. In fact, um, now look down in there. What, what's that? What that's done? Oh yeah, we've got some uh, gorgeousness happening there. I'm going to pull. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my herbs. Pull out those stems that we're uh, all that threw in whole because I'm just want to get some of the bigger pieces out. And, uh, and you can see that that's thickened up and it's getting all, you can tell when those bubbles start to get big, that's when the, the big things have, uh, have all, that's when you're starting to get some, uh, some real juice there. So uh, Tam is gone right now with our blender um, because I'm gonna blend this up a little. I don't know that you have to. I think that if you just left this fairly chunky, it would be it would be really nice yeah, as well. Yeah, I think. What do you serve it, that on, Jonathan? Like, what's oh, your favorite thing? Whatever you want, uh, a spoon probably <laughs> uh, would be appropriate. Some. Uh, so I'm just going to dump that into the blender. Would you rather spoon it? I bet that would be really good on homemade cheese crackers. I think it would. It would be particularly delicious. All right. So I've just put this in the blender, and I'm not going to puree this too smooth. I'm just going to hit it a couple of times. No, it's, it's, I just misplaced it. I'm just going to hit this a couple of times. Blender cam. <laughs> All right. And that's about as far as I'm going to go. Just, uh, just so you've got a little bit of texture. And then I've got, uh, I've got a little bit of a serving plate. Now, how would I serve this as a, uh, how would I serve this up as a gift? Probably in a jar, probably just in a regular old uh, little mason jar of some kind, little jelly jar. And... I might have you know some suggestions for what to do with it, but really, if you need suggestions for what to do with this, if you need suggestions for what to do with yeah. bacon and bourbon and onions and brown sugar, so whoa. that smells so good. So, and and you could give a, I probably would give this in small amounts. A little goes a long way. And I think you know the way I would probably try it is just with some regular old wheat thins. It would definitely be one way to go about it. Though I think another great way to do this would be over a block of cream cheese. Again, um, there's, uh, there's very little you can't. Or, or in little thumbprint cookies. That would be. Ooh, that would be good. That would be quite the hybrid of uh, everything we've done tonight. So there it is, folks. That is bourbon bacon jam that is going to be your best, uh, your best friend. And I'm going to let Jenny try it while I sneak off for a second. Hello, it's Dr. Piercy. Oh my God. Hey, what's up? Oh, it's so good. Oh, yeah. You never had this before? Jenny? I have. Really? But every time it's like an onion. I know. Mmm. Oh, this is so yeah, good. Give me a little. Yeah. A little nudge. Nice. Mmm, that bacon. I'm not meant to do things left-handed. That bacon is so mm. jammy and. Mmm. <laughs> oh my God, that's so good. Yeah. Mmm. Hmm. hmm. I need to be alone with that for a little while. So I'm layering my um, 
peppers and my oh, good, bologna. Good. And I've just heated uh -huh. that vinegar just enough to um, dissolve the sugar. I think the recipe, I can't even remember, it's been so long since I've looked at it. Mm -hmm. I think the recipe might call for salt, but the bologna is so salty that I usually don't mm -hmm. um, bother with that. That sounds good to me. Ring, I mean, a few onion rings. All right, thanks a lot, man. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bologna. And I love this. I love bologna. One of my favorite memories um, is when Hyman Settlement School, um, we haven't done it for the last couple of years because of COVID, but dancing and dumplings. Were you mm -hmm. here when the bologna boys were here? I don't I remember think those so. Thought. Yes, you, I think you were. I'm pretty sure you were. No, the, they came from the Louisville. Was gone Maybe. With, um, See, Harry Connick, Jordan DeLewis. Um, yes, Jordan DeLewis, exactly. And they made bologna from scratch, and it was awesome. And I so fantasize about being able to have homemade bologna um, and make pickle bologna. That's but good. and and you know, really, I should be able to do it because mm -hmm. the the having the casing and stuff was the special part. That so here's this. I usually tap it a little bit to let it settle, but look how pretty that looks. It's just gorgeous. And then I'm just going to pour. this over it. Let me get a little swirl there. Mm. To cover. And then my next jar, and that's that. Put it in the refrigerator and let it go. And then with this smaller jar, I'm going to do some smaller pieces of bologna. And I'm going to do nothing but garlic and red onion. So I've, I've taken this chub of bologna and I've sliced it once like this. And now I'm going to do couple, it. Yeah. So here you've almost got like a bologna relish that you're making herb. Well, almost. almost well, it won't be that small. Chow. Ooh, no, but I like that idea. I still want the bologna pieces to be big enough. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and now that you said that, Jonathan, I kind of like that idea of pickling it and then sort of and making it almost it like a bit. spread. Mm -hmm. That's kind of fun. Now, I bought a jar of already peeled mm -hmm. garlic um, because it takes so long. To I do it all the time. I do it all the time, too, and I really love it. And I want a lot because I love <laughs> pickled garlic. My daughter, actually, one of the reasons I bought this is my daughter the, um, just asked me, um, showed me some TikTok thing or something, and can we make some pickled garlic? And I said, we certainly can. So here I am making it. And I'm just going to pour this in. And I'm going to layer this with a little bit of our Aleppo pepper, mostly to look pretty, but also because I think it'll add a little, little spice to it. And I'm going to take sort of these inner rings of um, the red peppers. And those will add a pretty color too. You know, red pepper, I mean, um, purple onion get, makes stuff look really pretty. When you pickle purple onion, like for Mexican food or something, it turns a really beautiful pink, mm -hmm. really gorgeous. Oh yeah, that's looking terrific. I'm just going to top it with a little bit of the onion and pour some vinegar on it and call it a day. And again, this is just a, you know, and any friend can, who doesn't want this. You can use different. Your, your carnivorous friends, anyway. Yeah. You can use different um, spices. You know, you can play with your flavor profiles. But yeah, look how pretty that is. And that's going to want to sit, like I said, for about 14 days in your refrigerator um, mm -hmm. to pickle. And then it's one of those things, I don't know how long it lasts because I eat it so Yeah, fast. it couldn't, it's, it's, you know, 15 minutes. I mean, I I'm love, confused about how I it love bologna. It two weeks to get fully <laughs> it's that's really the, it's, hard. It's really tough. It's really hard. Let's try, um, Tamara, thank you for oh, you're welcome. making these. And let's just try these. And I've got a little dipping sauce. Let me grab that. I had it sitting up there. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Let me grab a little cup for it. I'm trying my own bacon jam, by the way. And it's, uh, and it's 
it's pretty spectacular. It's uh, again, you've got such that all that smoke so from that bacon. Good. And this again is just sort of a little sort of a buffalo sauce. Mm -hmm. It's butter, melted butter, and um, I like Texas peat, mm -hmm. which my daughter mistakenly called red peat, and now that's what we call it all the time in our house. And a little Worcestershire. I'll tell you my Texas peat story out once we're off the air. Let's hear it. Oh, we have to go oh, no, there. It's, it's not appropriate for the airways. Pretty good. Mm. It's like everything I love about cornbread. You know what would be good with this? A little bologna. A little bacon jam. That wouldn't be a miss. I think one of those back. Oh my God, yes. Mmm. 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 See, magic. Mm. Christmas magic we've made sitting right here in this kitchen. So you can see, you know, we've, we've been here for an hour and we've made, we've made a lot of really awesome things that you can give to people. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not like it's a big arduous task. It's not something that's huge and, uh, and difficult. It's something you can do uh, if you just, uh, you know, just give it some time. And, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to get onto some kind of a soapbox and God knows I love money and stuff as much as the next person, but let's dial it back a little bit on the... Consu the rampant consumerism of Christmas and of life in general, maybe. I've been, there's been a lot of stuff on, the, on NPR lately about how uh, much, like one of the biggest things we can do to um, decrease our carbon footprint and to be more sustainable is to quit buying so much stuff, you know, to mm -hmm. appreciate older things and to let things age and to not always feel like we have to get more and more and more. Mm -hmm. But how difficult that is because our whole economy is predicated on us buying a bunch of stuff. So it's it's a real conundrum that we've gotten ourselves into, I think. And I think one small way we can kind of step back from that is to make homemade gifts for people. Exactly. Um, and to make, like you said, consumables. Mm -hmm. Give experiences, give flavors, give things you can eat instead of, you know. Exactly. Whatever else you might have given. And if you want to learn how to make more delicious things, check in with us next month right here on on what's cooking now, where uh, where food is love and love is delicious. Um, we'll be back with you next month. And until then, feed the ones you love and love the ones you. Oh, we didn't try the cookies. Wait oh. one minute. Let's not. One stop. minute. Wait. We got cookies to try. I'm so mad at myself for forgetting the Ritz cracker part. Oh my god. They're they so did not good. Ritz crackers, no. Mm. They're still pretty good. Those are delightful. Mm. So until next time. Mm. Feed the ones you love and love the ones you feed. Take care. Have a good holiday. Mm. What's Cooking Now is a production of Hyman Settlement School with funding provided by the Kentucky Humanities Council. Hyman Settlement School is committed to cultivating and growing the local food system and the unique culinary and agricultural traditions of Central Appalachia through our food waste programs. For more information on our work, visit us at www.hyman.org and be sure to tune in to What's Cooking Now on the first Thursday of each month to see what's cooking. <laughs>